Let's start with a logical shift left. Here's an 8-bit CPU register with a binary number inside it. A typical computer these days makes use of 32-bit and 64-bit registers, but the principles of the logical shift operation can be illustrated with an 8-bit register. 8-bit registers were more typical of computers in the 1970s. This value is 42 in base 10. When a logical shift is performed, all of the bits inside the register are moved one place to the left. The leftmost bit is lost from the register completely and a zero is put in at the rightmost position. The new value now is 84. By performing a logical shift one place to the left, we've doubled the value in the register. Let's perform another logical shift on this number. As before, the leftmost bit is lost from the register, and a new zero is inserted in the right-hand side of the register. We've effectively multiplied by 2 again. This time we have 168. Let's perform a third logical shift on what's inside the register now. The leftmost bit is lost, this time it's a 1 and a new bit is inserted on the right-hand side. Because the most significant bit was a 1, and this was lost from the register, the effect of doubling the number has been lost. Now let's take a look at the logical shift right. Suppose the register contains the value 84 to begin with. When a logical shift right is performed, each of the bits moves one place to the right, the rightmost bit is lost from the register, and a new zero enters at the left. The original number has been divided by two. Let's do it again. Each of the bits moves one place to the right. The rightmost bit is lost, and a new zero enters at the left. The result is 21, which is half of 42. And again. Notice this time, that 21 has become 10 when shifted to the right. Since the register can only store whole numbers, the result of dividing 21 by 2, namely 10.5, has effectively been rounded down to the nearest whole number. This always happens when you right shift an integer, if you start with an odd number. Let's continue shifting to the right. 10 has successfully been divided by 2. We now have 5. No rounding down this time. However, shifting 5 to the right, another odd number to start with, results in 2. Another rounding error. Another shift to the right divides 2 by 2. This isn't a problem. But dividing 1 by 2 gives us 0. And clearly, any more right shifts will also result in 0. The logical shift is rarely the best choice for doing arithmetic, but it is very useful when you want to select a short sequence of bits from a longer sequence. Consider this example. This is a 32-bit colour code. It defines the colour of an individual pixel inside a bitmap image file. Many graphics applications work with image pixel data in a format similar to this. This sequence of 32 bits defines the amount of red, green and blue that should be mixed together to produce a new colour. The first byte on the right defines the amount of blue in the mix. This is the so-called blue channel. The next byte on the right defines the amount of green in the mix, the green channel. And the next byte along defines the value of the red channel. The leftmost byte is the alpha channel. It defines the transparency of a pixel. In this case, it's the largest possible value you can store in 8 bits, which means no transparency at all. It's fully opaque. Strictly speaking, this is not really a 32-bit integer. It's four separate 8-bit integers packed together. Here are the binary place values that really matter. And therefore, here are the denary values of the four channels. The value of each channel cannot exceed 255. By the way, 
In case you're wondering, these four values combine together to make a dark shade of pink. Colours are often described by humans using the red, green and blue values expressed in hexadecimal. Often, it's necessary to take a 32-bit colour code like this and separate out the value of each channel. In fact, something similar needs to happen in order to control the intensities of the red, green and blue lights that make up a screen pixel. What we're aiming for is four proper 32-bit integer values, one for each channel, like this. We can perform the unpacking process using a combination of logical shifts and bitwise AND operations. First, take a copy of the original 32-bit sequence. The bits of the blue channel are highlighted here so we can see what's going on. Then, apply a bit mask with an AND operation to reset all of the bits, except those in the rightmost byte. That's the blue channel separated from the others. Now, to separate the green channel from the others, we take another copy of the original bit sequence and shift everything eight places to the right. The bits of the green channel now occupy the rightmost byte. And these can be extracted by applying the same bit mask with another AND operation. To unpack the red byte, we take another copy of the original 32 bits and shift everything 16 places to the right, so that the bits of the red channel now occupy the rightmost byte. And again, these can be extracted in the same way using the same bit mask. Finally, we take another copy of the original bit sequence, shift everything 24 places to the right, and extract the alpha channel by anding the result with the same bit mask one more time. So, here are the four channels, each stored separately as a 32-bit integer. So what if we have four separate channels and we want to package them up again? This can be done using a combination of left shifts and OR operations. The alpha byte is shifted 24 places to the left. The red byte is shifted 16 places to the left. And the green byte is shifted 8 places to the left. Blue doesn't need shifting at all. With each byte in the correct place, these four values can now be combined together with OR operations, which means we're back to the original 32-bit colour code. Let's see this in visualbasic.net. In my program, I've declared four unsigned integers. These are 32-bit unsigned integers, and each of these contains a colour code for alpha, red, green and blue. Notice that I can use them directly to set the colour of an object on a form. For example, I'm setting the background colour of the button on my form. I use from ARGB to define a colour. And there's my dusky pink colour. To package these values up into a single 32-bit colour code, I can do it like this. Let's just uncomment these lines of code. I've declared another unsigned integer. I've called it one color code for want of a better name. And now I'm shifting the alpha channel 24 places to the left. I'm shifting the red channel 16 places to the left and the green channel 8 places to the left. The blue channel doesn't need shifting at all. These four values are then awed together. One line of Visual Basic, and I now have my new 32-bit colour code. There it is. To unpackage a single colour code, I can do this. I'm right-shifting the red channel, 16 places, and I'm using an AND mask of 255. 
I'm right shifting the green channel by 8 places and applying the same AND mask. And I'm taking the blue channel and I'm simply applying the mask. I don't need to shift it at all. I'm not bothered with the alpha channel. So I've separated out my red, green and blue. I've come full circle. Here's the logical shift operator being usefully applied in JavaScript. Web developers can use cascading style sheets, CSS, to specify the colour of a page element using separate numeric values for red, green and blue. But sometimes it becomes necessary to specify a colour using JavaScript. And this means you need to know the hexadecimal colour code. This function is passed three separate values for red, green and blue and it generates a single hexadecimal colour code. Notice the use of the shift operator. The red and green values are shifted accordingly and then the three parts are concatenated together using these plus signs. There's no masking going on here. The result is a string and this is converted into base 16 using this command. And this gives us our new hexadecimal code. This function is simply outputting it as an alert message. The function is being called by a button on the web page. This is what it does. There's the hexadecimal code. Let's remove the alert message and make this return the code instead. Now we can call the function to do the conversion whenever we need it. For example, to change the background colour of the page. Don't worry if you're not a web programmer. The important point here is that the logical shift has real-world applications. It's worth saying that some applications store or transmit colour codes as 32-bit values, but with these four bytes in a different order – green, then red, then blue, for example. Logical shifts, along with AND and OR operations, provide programmers with tools for changing the order of the bytes, for example, when transferring image data between systems. Indeed, some applications employ the so-called RGB 565 format. This format uses 5 bits for the red channel, 6 for green because our eyes are more sensitive to green, and 5 for blue. The quality isn't as good as RGB 888, but it does mean that only 2 bytes are needed for a single colour code. Logical shifts with AND and OR operations are often used to convert between different RGB formats.